Hello everyone. Before we discuss the trigonometric Fourier series, let us do a quick recap of orthogonal signal space. Now a real signal set, that means a set of real signals x1t, x2t and so on up to say xnt is orthogonal over an interval t1 to t2 if the inner product of xm with xn is equal to 0 for m not equal to n and it is equal to energy of the nth signal if m is equal to n. What it means is that the inner product of any two signals belonging to this orthogonal signal space is zero if those two signals are not identical, which is a classic definition of uh, orthogonality. And if m is equal to n, that means these two terms are actually identical. It simply means since m is equal to n, it basically means integration t1 to t2 xn the whole square dt, which is the energy of xn. That is the nth signal in this orthogonal signal space. Further, if the energy of xn is equal to 1 for all n, that means the energy of each of these signals is equal to 1, then this set is called an orthonormal set. That means a signal space which is orthogonal but also has a unit energy, so orthonormal. And any orthogonal set can be normalized by simply dividing xn by square root of en. Now if ft is to be approximated by n real orthogonal signals, then we can say that ft is approximately equal to some c1 x1t plus some c2 x2t plus up to some c capital N x capital NT which means FT can be written as summation of CN XNT N varying from 1 to capital N. Now the error in this approximation ET is actually equal to FT minus whatever is the approximation. So summation CN xn t n varying from 1 to capital N. We have already discussed that the energy of this error signal is minimized when c n is equal to integration from t1 to t2 f t x n t d t divided by xnt the whole square dt t1 to t2 and this denominator is nothing but energy of xn i could simply write it as energy of xn or en remember that xn this subscript means nth signal in this orthogonal signal space we can also see that the energy of this error signal can be rewritten as if this is not specifically an orthonormal set that means energy of nth uh, signal is not necessarily equal to 1 we can see that this energy would decrease if the number of such terms increases and effectively we can actually say that this energy would tend to zero as n tends to infinity. As the number of orthogonal signals representing this signal ft increases, we can say that the error in approximation tends to zero. That means for infinite number of terms, it's no longer an approximation. It's actually an exact representation of signal ft. Okay. And that is when we say 
that this orthogonal signal set is complete. Now before speaking about Fourier series, let us consider the trigonometric signal set defined as a constant cos omega naught t, cos 2 omega naught t and so on up to say some cos n omega naught t and it continues up to infinity. This set also includes sin omega naught t, sin 2 omega naught t and so on up to say some sin m omega naught t and so on up to infinity. Okay. We can show that this is actually a complete set. To be more precise, whether this is really an orthogonal set, let us see. The inner product of cos n omega naught t and cos m omega naught t dt. You can think of it as x n t and this is basically x m t. The interval t1 to t2 now here is an interval t0 where t0 is actually 2 pi by omega0. We can easily write this expression using trigonometric identities and we can find that this product is actually 0 when m is not equal to n and this product would come out to be t0 by 2 when m is equal to n but not equal to 0. Similarly, we can also show that the inner product of sinusoidal harmonics, some nth harmonic and an mth harmonic over an interval t0 is also equal to 0 when m is not equal to n and it is equal to t0 by 2 when m is equal to n but not equal to 0. It can also be shown that the inner product of nth harmonic of sine and say some mth harmonic of cos wave is always 0 for all m and n. This proves that this trigonometric set that we have is an orthogonal signal space which means that if I have a signal ft I can actually represent it as some C1x1t plus C2x2t and so on, right? Now, x1, x2, x3 here is this set 1 cos omega naught t, like a DC value meaning 0th frequency, 0th harmonic of omega naught, cos omega naught, then cos 2 omega naught, second harmonic, cos 3 omega naught, and so on. Then sin omega naught t, then sin 2 omega naught t, that is the second harmonic and so on up to infinity. This is this set. So, we are actually saying that we can represent ft as, as a linear summation of each of these terms because we have shown that this is a complete orthogonal set. right? So, how can I write it? We can say a0 being multiplied with this 1 plus some a1 times cos omega naught t plus some a2 times cos 2 omega naught t and so on. Then some, I am going to use a change of variable. I will use a for all the coefficients of cos terms and I will use b for all the sine terms. So, b1 sin omega naught t plus b2 sin 2 omega naught t and so on which means ft can be represented as a0 plus summation ak cos k omega naught t k varying from 1 to infinity plus summation bk sin k omega naught t k varying from 1 to infinity. Fourier series representation says that if ft 
is a periodic signal having a fundamental period t0 and a fundamental frequency omega0 then we can represent ft in terms of linear summation of harmonically related cos and sin terms such that each of these terms is multiplied with a coefficient which denotes what is the amount or what is the amplitude of that particular harmonic that is present how to find these ak's and bk's we already know that if some ft was represented as a summation of cn xnt where xn is a set of orthogonal signals n varying from 1 to capital n or 1 to infinity or to be more general i could say n is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity in that case cn was simply drawing a parallel here this interval is t not that is the fundamental period of ft so i can simply write ak meaning the kth coefficient would be simply ft multiplied with the kth signal in the signal space meaning cos k omega not t dt now my interval of interest is t not divided by the energy of cos k omega not t over an interval t not it may be easily shown that this term is equal to t not by 2 for k not equal to 0 so i could simply rewrite this expression and say that ak is actually so divided by t not by 2 so 2 by t not integration over interval t not ft cos k omega not t dt remember that ak's for k not equal to 0 are the coefficients of cos harmonics similarly it may be shown that bk is 2 by t not integration ft sin k omega not t dt here again in the denominator you would have the energy of sin k omega not t and that would come out to be t not by 2 okay. a 0 is actually the dc value or the 0th frequency that means the average value of the original signal on which all these other harmonics are clamped so i can say that that is simply the average of ft over an entire cycle so the trigonometric fourier series representation of a signal ft having a fundamental period t naught can be written as a naught plus a k cos k omega naught t summed up from k equal to 1 to infinity plus b k sin k omega naught t k varying from 1 to infinity this is called the trigonometric fourier series representation which is essentially saying that if a signal originally had period t naught t naught meaning the fundamental frequency is omega naught we can represent this signal ft as a linear summation of a dc term and weighted summation of cos and sin terms which are harmonically related and ak and bk individually can be computed using these expressions now ak and bk inclusive of the dc value are called the trigonometric fourier coefficients and they individually represent the amplitude of the kth harmonic or it represents the amount of xt that is denoted by the kth harmonic thank you